Unlike a deck profile episode, today is going to be my review on EX6 as a set after opening two cases. You've seen a lot of individuals posting their pulls, and honestly the frequency of the SP rare seems to have increased. That being said, I have to be honestly one of the unluckiest people in the card game, considering I went two cases without even one. In hindsight, I may have blessed too many boxes out there and shared the luck rather than keeping some of it. But as always, if you enjoy this type of content, do consider leaving a like on this video, subscribing to the channel, and commenting if you pulled something awesome. The narrative of this video will be to give you my personal experience with EX6 with my two cases, along with breaking it down statistically into how many boxes it would take for you to pick up everything you need, along with the current price breakdown, and of course, the future value of the set. If your only goal is to make money on the set, you've got a small window to unload everything as quickly as possible before a majority of the set tanks. Don't worry, I have another long essay styled video going over this, and I think you'll enjoy it. EX6 offers your standard pull ratios for a box. Six super rares, three alternate arts, one box topper, and the chance for an extra secret rare hit. However, there's one major difference this time. Those SP rares? They actually take up an alternate art slot this time. Not a rare, but one of your alternate arts. In total, this means that your box will have 10 to 11 cards of goodness. But exactly how worthwhile is the set and what are your statistical chances on pulling certain cards. I'll do a brief overview on my pulls before jumping to a huge sample size I was able to obtain from several players, one of my viewers included. Big shoutouts to American Bash, Tomo is Real, and Masterlink TM. In total, across my box toppers, I went dead even two of every box toppers for a case. Only problem is, none of the box toppers are insane by any means, so I'm not really going to care too much about this one. In regards to super rares, I went fairly equal between my cases on hits. Always a minimum of 5 of each super rare, and hitting 3 of each of the regular art secret rares. Alt arts were also fairly interesting in that across the board, I did not get more than 3 copies of an alt art ever in a case. Instead, you're almost always guaranteed one of every alt art in the set at the minimum with a case. But this is just from my collected data. So the question, what kind of conclusions can I make from SP Rares with 24 boxes? Honestly, I can't. I don't have enough metrics to quantify in regards to the SP Rares, but with the additional cases that were opened, you bet your buns I have some info that could help with this. The total data that I have gathered for this video is 90 boxes, which equates to 7.5 cases. Yes, I can also confirm that there were 7 cases open for this video, not 90 loose boxes. The other half of the case that is missing was opened up with another individual, but no numbers were recorded to add to this list. However, they opened up one and a half cases and even opened an SP rare. So when I get to the metrics of SP rares, I'll be talking about it from a nine case perspective instead of seven and a half. As usual, I'll go down the breakdown and explain the percentages and whatnot. With the box toppers, Sakudamon came up 15 times out of the 90 boxes meaning an average of 17%, which indicates that you'll have to open at a bare minimum of 24 boxes to get a play set. Yokomons would require 28 boxes, while Kyupimon and Kakinmon would see the same frequency as Sakudomon. TK and Kari and Suchong would be in the middle with about 26 boxes in frequency. For your base rarity super rares, the super rare with the highest frequency was Diaboromon which is honestly convenient considering this is one of the more popular super rares of the set. Appearing 50 times across 90 boxes, this means that you could probably get a playset of this Digimon in close to 7 boxes. The card that saw the least amount of appearance was Ultimate Chaos Mon, which honestly, I am perfectly fine with considering this card has little to no value and probably won't have additional value at this point. This card requires at least 9 boxes based on my data in order to get a full playset almost a full two boxes more versus your other super rares. But generally, if you're going to gamble for alt arts and whatnot, that's a complete toss-up on value, which again, I'll cover momentarily. Secret rare-wise, I saw an even split as I mentioned earlier with Ogudomon and Mirei Mikagura. With the other data, it got slightly skewed more towards Mirei, and if you're looking to open your own playset, you're looking at a minimum of 18 boxes to get this set. Generally, out of the 90 boxes, 44 of them had the extra secret rare hit. 
indicating a fairly close 50% to get a secret. So when you head to a store, there's a 50% chance that a box on the shelf will have a secret rare. But what about the alt arts? In regards to analysis on this, I can actually give better data this time than I have been in the past, mainly because the cluttering of alt arts seem to not be as present as compared to normal core sets. Ragnar Lordmon, for example, was pulled 15 times out of 90 boxes. Again, meaning if you wanted a play set of Ragnar Lordmons, you likely had to open 24 boxes. Presenting all the numbers here, of your alternate arts that weren't secrets, Ophaniamon Ace, Mastamon Ace, Shakamon, Cherubimon Ace, and Barbamon had the smallest frequency of appearances, indicating at least 30 boxes would get you your play set. Funny enough, out of the alternate arts I am missing as of the writing of this video, Shakamon, Cherubimon Ace, and Barbamon are missing ones for me as well. When it comes to secrets, interestingly, I am in the minority of this one, as other players were able to get their playsets of Mire within two cases. For me, I am presently at three, but Ogudomon appears to be the harder alt art secret to pull at 33 boxes, while Mire would take 28. From my overall results, you can almost guarantee a playset of alternate arts within 33 boxes. Close to three cases. But now the fun part of SP Rares, where is Bandai on this? Remember, earlier I mentioned that half of a case is unaccounted for since one of my friends opened up two and a half cases, which means the other half of that case had to go somewhere else. But because no numbers were recorded, I can't use the numbers everywhere else. But across nine cases, a total of five SP Rare cards were opened. This currently indicates that SP Rares have a frequency of 1 in 2 cases, but this is purely conjecture and could very well be the typical 1 in every 3 to 4 cases. So realistically, how many boxes would you need to open? With 6 SP Rares for this set, you'd have to open an average 24 boxes for the chance of even getting 1. And making the other assumption that this is actually true, it would take you 576 boxes to potentially get all of them as a play set. Jokes aside, the math indicates that it would probably take you 360 boxes to guarantee pick up a playset of specifically one of them. But we know no one's going to be crazy enough to do that, right? Which takes the video to the final discussion, the price. Is it worth it? As always, I've gone ahead and made the predictive prices based on playability and where cards will most likely settle too. These prices are in no way an indication of what will likely happen because if one of these decks tops in the next event, you bet there's going to be some crazy price spikes. But generally, if you were to sum up all the prices of the super rares, you come up to a price of about $510. When you do the same thing to the alt arts, the price comes out to about $1,700. So generally, if you're going out and buying four of every card from the get-go, it's going to cost you about $2,200. But the question, how much did I pay comparatively to current box prices, and what is the average pull value per a box? On my end, I spent about $74 per box with shipping, while another one of my friends managed to buy in at about $63 a box. Remember, the lower the number, the more imaginary profits. With my current revised values, box values average to about $114 a box. If you're paying this price point per a box after tax, it's honestly not bad because chances are, you'll break even. Personally, out of my boxes, I saw only two boxes out of the 24 that gave me a loss. So again, not bad. Average profits were a positive $40 if you were to buy boxes in the $70 to $80 range. But overall, if you're wanting to buy some of the newest cards of EX6, my recommendation is to wait because as product is opened, about 90% of the set typically falls with only a few key winners. If you're hyped about SP rares, same situation. Look at the BT16 SP rares as an example. A majority of them are now under $200 at this point, and even with Gold Magnum on X, this card is a mandatory 4 of in the deck. While true, Ogudomon has sold for $700 on TCG Player, personally, I think this is just another manipulation tactic on the high end. What are your thoughts on this video, and did you enjoy opening up your own boxes for EX6 Infernal Ascension? Let me know your thoughts on this video, the breakdown, and I'll catch you on my next discussion video. This is Digipanda, logging out.